Face Facts America. Looking ahead to 1950. Produced as a learning tool, by Robert Rundle's Magic Words through the Zodiac series. Which are sold through the Sacred Science Institute of Cosmological Economics. Face Facts America. Looking ahead to 1950. By W. D. Gann. With the greatest war in the history of the world raging, and man's inhumanity to man the greatest that has ever been known, with the Germans ruthlessly destroying women and children and showing no mercy, it becomes the duty of everyone who can by word, deed or act do anything to aid the United States to protect America's interest in the future. I write this with a desire that the truth will help because holding on to hope has ruined other countries and will ruin the United States if it is continued. In 1927, when I wrote The Tunnel Through the Air or Looking Back from 1940, by the use of time cycles that I have discovered through knowledge gained in reading the Bible, I foresaw what would happen and it has all come true. Unbelievable weapons of death and airplanes making 5 to 600 miles per hour are being used in the war. All of these things I predicted in The Tunnel Through the Air in 1927. I wrote then to try and help and I write now to tell the truth to those who can and will believe and act. If I can wake up a few people to realize that they must do something to help save liberty and Christianity in our great country, then I will not have written in vain. I believe in God and in the law of compensation. I advise everyone to read the book of Revelation and they will see how this terrible war was predicted. People should read the Bible more, especially the books of Solomon and Proverbs, and follow the wise counsel and try to gain knowledge. Cause of the World's Troubles we must first determine the cause and not deal with effects because dealing with effects instead of causes is what has brought all of the troubles to the world and to the United States. More and greater troubles will follow unless the world and the United States face facts and act before it is everlastingly too late. There are many causes for the present troubles existing throughout the world, but the greatest cause of all is greed for power and money. The Bible says that love of money is the root of all evil. Unwise leaders, Ruthless and reckless politicians in their greed for power have deceived the people and this is the most important cause of all, in my opinion, of the world's troubles. When the World War ended in 1918, we were told that it would be the last war. This war was fought to save democracy. Germany was disarmed and agreed to a settlement of debts and reparations. Germany's failure to live up to these agreements and pay these debts is the cause of the war and troubles today both to Germany, Europe and the world. Germany could have paid every dollar of the World War debt. The proof of this is that Germany has spent more than $40 billion to prepare for war and that is why they are waging such a successful war. In 1870, when Germany won the war, she settled a debt on France of $1 billion and France paid every dollar of it and still lives. $1 billion in 1870 was equal to $10 billion in 1920. Germany, of course, worked upon the sympathy of the world, and finally, President Hoover declared a moratorium and Germany stopped paying her debts. From that day on, Germany started to repudiate everything and started to spend money to prepare for another war, bleeding her people white, and practically enslaving them. England and France trusted Germany and believed she would live up to the agreement and never fight again. That is where they made their mistake hoping instead of facing facts and preparing for the worst. There is no question but that the Allies hoped, wanted and worked for peace. They knew the cost and the horrors of war and wanted no more of it. Hitler, no doubt believed, once he started bluffing, he could continue to bluff and take everything he wanted, but, at the same time Hitler faced the facts and prepared to fight if necessary, to get what he wanted. The Allies hoped and failed to prepare and the result is that they have had to pay the penalty for not facing facts. If Germany had paid her debts as she agreed to after the end of the war and had been made to pay, then England and France could have paid the United States, regardless of the mistakes that have been made by the Allies, the final cause of the present war and all the troubles must be laid at the door of Germany. Why Hitler Succeeds the reason for Hitler's success is based on two words. Hope and fear. Hitler knowing that the German people had gone through privations and suffering during the World War promised them impossible things, raising their hopes. In this way he gained a following and ascended to power. Then, 
to control the people and make slaves out of them and to take from them everything they had, he worked upon their fears. In fact, no ruler who has ever lived has been more ruthless with his own people than Hitler. He has been the most supreme dictator that ever lived in the history of the world and if the truth was known, he is the most hated man in Germany among the common people. But they fear him and have to submit to whatever he imposes upon them. Hitler is not fighting for a just cause or for the benefit of the German people. He is fighting to gratify egotism and be a world dictator. He is the kind of man who wants vengeance and wants power. Once he holds a grudge, he will resort to any means to accomplish his purpose. He hates England and would rather conquer England probably than all the rest of the world. When any man works and acts through his anger or through his hatred he fails. It is not necessary to take up time to review the history of the world to prove that this is a fact. All rulers who have tried to conquer the world and become a world power have met defeat, with the exception of Alexander. If the world had been larger at that time, he would have met the same fate as Napoleon and others. Another reason for Hitler's success is the fact that human nature does not change. Every 20 years, a young generation comes along that is full of hope and optimism. They are hero worshippers and can easily be led. Hitler's rise to power is due to his following by the younger generation. The older Germans have opposed Hitler's ideas from the start. The young blood hero worshippers are following Hitler to their doom. That is why rulers and politicians can rise to power because they appeal to the imagination or the hope of the young generation who act without thinking, believe all they hear and do not seek knowledge or act according to well-defined laws or plans. Why Germany will lose the war First, I will give a well-known economic reason why the Germans must lose in the end. They are fighting the fastest war in history, therefore using up food and all kinds of materials faster than ever before. They started out with a limited supply, with the expectation of that supply being greatly increased. Their hopes and expectations have not been realized and I do not believe they will. Germany is rapidly exhausting her manpower as well as materials, munitions and food supplies. Hitler has gambled everything on one lightning bolt stroke. If this fails, the war is lost. If Germany invades the Balkans, it is my opinion that Russia will turn against her. Certainly, Turkey will fight on the side of the Allies and it is more than possible that Romania will. In the final analysis, Mussolini may be smart enough to join the Allies against his partner, because if Germany should win and Italy should help. Italy will get nothing. If Germany loses and Italy is on her side, she will be ruined. It is always darkest just before dawn. As I write on May 24, 1940 it looks bad for the Allies. But they now know that they are fighting a battle of life and death. They are fighting for liberty. If they lose, it means slavery and the worst conditions possible in the history of the world. Hitler is fighting on the same ground that Napoleon met his Waterloo. My opinion is that Hitler will meet defeat and will meet it sooner than he expects. Just as sure as retribution follows crime, by the law of compensation and God. The man who violates all the laws of God and man, or the nation that violates all the laws of God and man, always loses in the end. And Hitler and Germany will lose this time. There has never been a man so smart but that success did not go to his head, and when he is drunk with success he makes the one fatal mistake that causes his downfall. England and France have produced some of the smartest men that have ever lived in the world. They have just as many and more men of brains today than Germany and they are now working day and night to find the way to win the war. Should the United States enter the war? The reason for the United States entering the war or helping the Allies at this time are much greater than they were in 1917. We know now and know much better than we did in 1917 that if Germany wins the war then no country on the face of the earth will be safe. Hitler and Germany will attempt to enslave and rule the world. Christianity will go and freedom will go. The will of the dictator will be law. Only God can save America if the Germans win. There is not past history or no reason to believe that if the Germans win this war and are drunk with victory that they will stop and settle down to be a peaceful nation. They are certainly going to try to conquer South America and North America. 
let no one deceive himself about that. It pays to face facts, and hope can only lead to disaster. That is why the world is in the trouble it is today, because too many of our rulers have hoped instead of facing facts and preparing for the worst. Whether it be in private or national affairs, the man who looks forward and sees the darkest side and prepares for it is the man who will succeed, and the nation that prepares for the worst will not have to face the worst. It will be much cheaper for us to lend all the aid possible to the Allies now than to fight Germany alone later when all the weapons and the power gained by winning this war would be turned against us. We do not have to send men across the water to fight the war. Men will not help. The Allies need airplanes, tanks and food. That we can furnish them and that we should do. If we do our part in that way, the Allies will win and the world will be saved. Christianity will be saved and religion will once more be the hope of free men. We follow false prophets and unwise politicians who tell us that it can't happen here who lead us into believing that they can get us out of the worst trouble by more false promises, when we know the mess we are already in now by following the promises of New Deal leaders and dictators. We are a peaceful nation and may not want to fight but we will be forced to fight and will have to fight alone if we do not help the Allies. Many people will argue that the Allies failed to pay their debts just the same as other nations, but it must also be recognized that this was due partly to the fact that Germany did not pay the Allies. We must blame ourselves for Germany not paying because it was the United States that declared the moratorium and gave Germany a chance to welch on her debt. We must be fair and see both sides of the question and at this critical hour we cannot let prejudices stand in the way. If you had a neighbor who had been your enemy and his house was burning down and you knew that unless the flames were stopped your house naturally would burn up, would it not be a part of wisdom to help that enemy stop the fire that was destroying his house in order to save your own? It is the same situation today. If we don't help the Allies put out this flame of war, it will destroy us next. There is one thing that we can be sure of, that England and France will never fight the United States. They will remain peaceful Christian nations and will help us all they can if we help them win the war. Another fact that we must face is that Germany will never change. She has never changed. She has always repudiated her debts. Has always broken every promise she has made and will in the future. Therefore, the only way to play safe against Germany is to prepare to defeat her and place her in a position where she will never be a menace to the world again. The Mistakes of the New Deal Mistakes have to be paid for and there have never been more mistakes made in any administration of the United States than have been made by the New Deal and the people must pay the price for following leaders who made promises that they never intended to fulfill. Politicians appeal to the hopes of the people and continue to promise and the one who promises the most is the one who can be elected, because it is human nature for most of the people to be looking for something for nothing and trying to get something for nothing. Therefore, they will vote for any waste of public money in the history of the country than there has been under the New Deal. It has cost more than it cost during the World War. These mistakes, this reckless spending will continue just as long as the New Dealers are in power. The little man, the man that hopes and the man that votes and follows the New Deal politicians is never told the truth or the facts of what the New Deal is doing to him. When the New Dealers went into power, Savings banks were paying the laboring class 4 to 5% interest on their money. Today, they are getting 1 to 2% interest on their savings. Who is responsible for this? The New Deal. They have ordered interest rates reduced. The administration fights big business and tells the little man how he is being discriminated against and a burden being placed on him. They do not tell him the truth, that the government has cut the interest on his savings in half. If the little man stops to think, he will realize that the New Deal is fighting him just the same as it is big business. Insurance companies have been hurt. Their investments have depreciated and their income which protects the women and children, the widows and orphans has been reduced by acts of the government. Union labor has been given everything, even the right to destroy life and property and the hand of our government has not been raised against this ruthlessness. Why? Because John L. Lewis helped to furnish the money and the votes to elect the New Dealers and he tells President Roosevelt and the government what they have to do and he does just as he pleases. In 1932, 
we started to pull out of the depression and would have come through all right if the country had been let alone. Prices had gone down and the dollar was really worth something and bought more than it had for many years. People were starting back to work for whatever price they could get for their labor because they could live cheaper than before and would accept lower wages. If this condition had continued, keeping the cost of living down, the volume of business would have increased to such a great extent that more money could have been made, that is, more net profit, because of a greater volume of business. Then the New Deal increased the cost of living and increased the cost of labor, and shortened the hours which caused an abnormal advance in manufacturing costs. This stopped progress which had been started and business was retarded through restrictions and limitations. By increasing the cost of everything that the farmer used, the money that the government gave to the farmer for limiting his crops, left him no better off than before. The action of limiting crops put thousands of people out of employment, people who knew how to do nothing else but farm. Restrictions and limitations have put thousands of small concerns out of business. The present administration has made the greatest fight against business of any administration in the history of this country. The New Deal is no longer adhering to former laws or the Constitution. The New Dealers have seen to it that the judges appointed to the Supreme Court interpret the laws according to these brain trusters. How many thousands of people are there today who are living off the government and will not take a job if they can get it? How long will the taxpayer be able to stand this strain? How much better off would this country be if these loafers were told they must work or starve? Canada reached the stage last year where they found that they were being imposed upon in providing relief and when the government found that there were plenty of jobs in the country, men were told that they must go to work and those that refused were put off relief. This proved to be a good plan as many men who had been living off the people went to work. Our government has prevented big business from expanding and in this way increased unemployment. We will never have good times, boom or prosperity in this country until the man who saves money is given a chance to make a fair return on it in business. If everything is going to be taken away that a man makes in business to pay the wasteful extravagance of the New Deal then people will not risk their capital in business. When losses come, business cannot stand them and when profits are made the government takes most of them. The speculators, progressive and aggressive people of the country are the backbone of the nation. Without people taking a chance, new industries could not get started because somebody must buy the sticks and bonds of the companies in order that they may get a start. Our government passed a law that if a man loses $100,000 in stocks in one year, he can take credit for only $2,000 of the loss but should he make $100,000 in a year, the government will take $20,000 to $50,000 of it in taxes. Can any sane man or woman say that this is justice or fairness or that we are living in the land of liberty? Air mail contracts cancelled. The cancellation of the air mail contracts and the assignment of army pilots to fly the mail over routes which they had never been over resulted in the killing of hundreds of America's best pilots. This proves the inefficiency, lack of ability and ignorance of the administrators of the New Deal. NRA The New Deal passed laws to suit their own purpose regardless of whether they were constitutional or not, as evidenced by the fact that the Supreme Court declared the NRA unconstitutional, which President Roosevelt later said would send us back to the days of the horse and buggy. However, we are not back there yet, but the New Deal has done and is doing all in its power to send us back to the days of the horse and buggy. It is only by facing facts and taking prompt action that we can prevent the New Dealers from accomplishing their purpose and ruining the country. Silver and Gold Purchases the purchasing of silver from Mexico and other countries at a price far above the world markets cost the taxpayers of the United States several billions of dollars and who did it help? Mostly foreigners and those who were working against us. American miners benefited some but China and other countries sent all of their silver into the United States because they could sell it at a greater price in our market. Who paid this loss? The taxpayers. The government has held the price of gold above world prices, Therefore gold from all parts of the world has flowed into this country. This has helped Russia, an enemy to the Christian world and to the United States. When the United States wants to sell the gold, who are they going to sell it to, and can they get the price they paid for it? 
has the government ever been able to explain to anyone just what they are going to do with all of this gold? They certainly will not permit the people to have any of it or use it. My opinion is that the day will come when gold will be sold in the open market for what it will bring and that the price of gold will decline. Foreign countries with their currency depreciated cannot buy gold in this country nor exchange their goods for gold at a price of $35 per ounce. This will cause another stupendous loss and place another burden on the back of the taxpayer. All of these extravagances of the government, together with increased government expenses and unemployment is taking more than 30% of the income from the taxpayers and from the people of the United States. This can result in nothing but bankruptcy. All this has been done by the administration who promised reduction of government expenses and a balanced budget. If they could show results for all this money spent, things would be different, but they can't. Home Loans Billions of dollars of money loaned on farms and other real estate loans will be lost because the loans have been made at inflated values. It has been reported that over 100,000 homes and farms have already been abandoned and left on the government's hands. These cannot be sold for one half of what the government loaned on them and the taxpayer must make up the loss. Immigration Laws This is another mistake of the New Deal. They have allowed the enemies of liberty to come into this country from foreign countries and even allowed racketeers who have been driven out of other countries to come here and enjoy all the freedom of this country and to work against us. The smartest man and the greatest friend of the United States is Martin Dyes. Through his wisdom years ago he foresaw what was going to happen. The government has worked against him and now has awakened to the fact that he has been telling the truth and gathering the facts about the enemies within our own border. The fifth column is here and must be reckoned with, yet we have thousands of people today who refuse to face facts and want to live on hope, who are against eyes or anyone else who tells the truth of what the enemy aliens are doing. Government Guarantees the government passed a law that guaranteed the deposits in the banks. But what is behind those guarantees? The government continues to increase the debt and sell bonds. What will that government guarantee be worth when government bonds sell at 50 or lower, which they will if war comes or if the government spending continues at the present rate? Yet the politicians have told the people that all of these things were being done to benefit them. Confiscatory Taxes Taxes have been raised until they have become confiscatory. The New Deal has arrayed class against class. It has refused to tell the truth or to face facts. They have continued to take the people's money and spend it, but have condemned the man who makes and saves the money. Where would this country be today if people who worked had not saved that money? Business could not run, government could not run. Certainly, the money that runs the government is not taken from the laboring class or from the little man. It is taken from the wealthy man, the man who runs a large business, yet the government is an enemy of large business and an enemy to any man who saves or accumulates money. The government wants to take that money and has taken it and given it to those who vote to keep the politicians in power. They create fears in the minds of people and then raise false hopes in order that they will follow these blind leaders who have never shown enough wisdom to make a success of any business. These stubborn facts must be faced. Government Debt President Roosevelt wishes to be permanently in power or continue as our president for a third term or more. How was this nation able to build up the greatest country in history of the world without President Roosevelt? Have we never had smart men before and why is it that President Roosevelt and the New Dealers are the smartest men in the world? Do the records prove this? Certainly, we have other businessmen who have proven their ability. They have been able to run their business, keep it out of debt, accumulate money and pay dividends, while the New Dealers do nothing but continue to run the government into debt and will not stop until we face bankruptcy. They tell us, it can't happen here and that this government can stand a debt of $70 billion. When they get it up to $70 billion, they will say we can stand a debt of $100 billion. They will never stop until everything is wiped out and all values are destroyed. Those in favor of the New Deal and these false ideas based on hope and optimism will yell don't sell America short. The time is coming when you can sell government bonds or anything short if this reckless spending goes on. 
buying votes, giving people something for nothing is just making enemies who will fight the government and the people who support the government when they cannot get something for nothing. These are facts to be faced, for it is natural for people to turn against the hand that feeds them. We find the same in family life, a relative who refuses to work and is supported by some of the family will turn his hand against them, forgetting all the favors and the good things they have done for him just as soon as they discontinue to help him. Facts are an anchor for the stability of the country, hopes are the quicksand on which bankruptcy and disaster are founded. Burden of Debt This is the greatest burden placed upon the people of this country today, and the government has fostered and encouraged increasing debt, both private and public. The government has passed laws forcing investors to put up 40% margin to buy stocks or bonds. Yet the government has loaned the taxpayers money to people to buy real estate and homes on a 10% margin and sometimes 5% and this on inflated value. On many homes which are being built, the government is financing and making loans of 80-90%. to 90%. These loans should not be more than 30-40% to 40% to be safe, but nothing the New Deal does is safe. Everything is recklessness. The whole idea of the New Deal has been that by continuing to go into debt they can buy prosperity. They failed in giving away money to farmers. Farm prices are at low levels. They have failed in giving away money to put people to work. There are more people unemployed today than there were when President Roosevelt took office the first time and yet you hear no answer or no reason given why these conditions exist after more than $50 billion of taxpayers' money have been wasted. Money has been appropriated for defense, but we are now told we have no defense and $3 billion more have to be appropriated. When and where will this government's reckless spending stop and if it doesn't stop, what will be the final result? The final result will be bankruptcy and disaster. No business or government can continue to spend more than its income without someday facing bankruptcy. Few people realize that this terrible burden from government debt that hangs over the country is a mortgage on the earnings of children yet unborn and a mortgage on every home and piece of real estate in the United States, that it must be paid sooner or later. Property assessments are no longer based on value, but are assessed for whatever amount they can force the taxpayer to pay. In many cases property in the state of New York is assessed at two or three times the actual value and the taxpayer is forced to pay the taxes on false value. Is not this confiscation of property? The rights and liberties are being taken away from the people and just like Hitler, the more the new dealers are allowed to take, the more they will do that. A law was passed taking all the gold from the people. This gold was the property of the people. After the new dealers got the gold they raised the price 75%, but did the public who turned over that money get the benefit of the advance? No. Yet the people stood for that. They have been standing for everything and taking it meekly. The day will come when another emergency will be declared and all the liberties, property, and money, everything the people own will be taken away from them. Some people who read this will say that I am a pessimist, but many people will live to see these things become facts to their sad disillusionment, unless something is done and done quickly. What will happen if new dealers are elected in 1940? If the New Dealers are elected in 1940, there is one sure thing, the worst that can be imagined will happen, because President Roosevelt, if elected in November, will then become virtually a dictator. He will have violated the third term tradition and when he knows that he has control for the next four years, or probably for life, he and the other New Dealers will be more reckless with the people's money than they have ever been before. What can the New Deal now show in the way of results for more than seven years? the time which they have been in power? They can show the largest debt in the history of this country, the same number of people unemployed, the country full of enemy aliens, Mexico permitted to take the properties from the United States and nothing done about it. They can show a record that they are collecting the largest amount of taxes in the history of the country and that the rights of business have been taken away and that people have been restrained, restricted and told what they can and cannot do. We have less protection for property or for personal liberty now than we ever had before. Once we have a dictator and all property is taken over in the United States, will we ever get back our liberty? 
that is a grave question for it is an old adage that possession is nine points of the law and once a dictator has possession he will never release it until we have a revolution and fight for it. A revolution is just as sure to come as the sun rises and set if the conditions that exist today continue, because we will finally reach the state where the people in the United States will rise up and fight for the liberties that they so dearly love and the liberties that our fathers fought and gave their best for. Every time we have an election, government expenses increase because new officials who are elected make promises to some of their supporters and repay them by creating new offices and increasing expenses which are laid upon the back of the already heavily burdened taxpayer, the man who works, saves and runs his business in a conservative manner. The burden is getting so heavy that it cannot continue much longer. The New Deal has ruined the market for our commodities and hurt the farmer. We have lost the cotton market of the South and will never regain it. Men have been placed at the heads of different departments who know no more about farming or managing the business of the farmer than the most ignorant Negro who has never been on a farm. That is the basis of the trouble, people without experience, men who have never made a success for themselves have been placed at the head of the government to regulate business throughout this broad land. The result has been nothing but disaster. A government official might be honest and conscientious but at the same time incompetent. That has been the greatest trouble with the New Deal incompetent men at the head of the various departments. The idea has been to rule and ruin. It is not a question of a safe and sane method of business. It is a question of dictatorship, to tell the farmer that he has to kill his hogs, that he has to plow up his cotton, burn his wheat and destroy, to please the rulers who are in power. Why should one business be favored more than another? If the farmer cannot succeed and make a living tilling the soil, why should the government give him money for nothing? It is a poor rule that doesn't work both ways. Why should the government not give the businessman money who fails to make a success in business? Did anybody ever hear of the government appropriating money to give to people in the hardware business who are losing money? And did anybody ever hear of the government appropriating money to reimburse people who lost money in public utilities because the government fought the utilities and destroyed the value, thereby wrecking and ruining investors throughout the United States? No. The government of the new dealers only appropriated and gave money where they wanted to buy votes. That is the truth and the fact of the matter. The rights of the taxpayer are nothing. He is the goat and must bear the burden. The Bible says, for he that hath, to him shall be given, and he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. The new dealer's idea is that it shall be taken from him who hath and given to him who hath not provided he will give his vote to the new dealers. Why should Roosevelt have a third term? The only good reason that I can see why he should break the third term tradition and run is that he should be forced to take the blame for all his mistakes and those of his administration. The damage which they have done should not be borne by a new president, nor should the mistakes they have made be saddled on another administration. The new dealers may be glad to have a Republican elected, because they can see the danger signals ahead and know that the day of reckoning is coming when the people will rise up against them for placing a burden of taxes upon them which they are unable to bear. The new dealers on their record can offer no good reasons why they should remain in power. Why should President Roosevelt remain in power just because there is a war crisis? Has he, as a New Dealer, proved by the records that he could handle the country any better through a war than some of the other able businessmen in both the Democratic and Republican parties? If the New Dealers have run up a debt greater than we have ever had before in war, it certainly proves that they do not know how to manage the government. There is no reason to believe that they could handle affairs or manage them any better during a crisis of war than they have during peace times. War emergency would only give them excuse to squander more money. The reason new dealers want to get in for a third term is that a war emergency would give them just the opportunity that they are looking for to take over all of the properties and take away all of the rights of the people of the United States. New dealers want complete control and want dictatorship. They have proved that from start to finish by taking away the rights of the people restricting and limiting business of all kinds. We have had wars and depressions in the past. We had panics in 1937, 1841-47, 1853, 1857, 1898, 1907, 1920-21, 1930-31, 1931, 
1929-1933. We had able men at the head of the government during those times who pulled us through those panics without any government relief and each time the country emerged to greater prosperity. Why? Because people worked from dawn to dusk. They did not ask for shorter hours and more pay. They worked to make this the glorious country that it is. The government did not go into debt billions of dollars during those periods of depression. The last depression could have been handled the same way if the people had been allowed to go their own way, and if the government had been on a cash basis, not running needlessly into debt. The only way we will ever get out of this and solve the problem is to pay as we go. Has government regulation helped the people? What has been the result of restriction and regulation? Have they helped business or the public or the investor? My answer is that they have not. My proof is that the government regulation and restriction by the Securities and Exchange Commission has done the greatest damage to this country that it is possible to have done. The result is that they have caused thin markets and made stocks hard to sell, causing some of the sharpest and the greatest declines in stocks in the history of the New York Stock Exchange. These things could not and would not happen if a free and open market was permitted and anyone who had the money and wanted to buy stocks was permitted to buy them. We would not have had the wide open smashes on war scares if the corporations and their managers and the bankers were permitted to go in and buy stocks and support the market. The trouble is that we have had people trying to regulate something that they know nothing about. It has all been a case of ignorance, of the blind leading the blind. The result is the ox is in the ditch and the ignorant leader don't know how to get the ox out. The law of supply and demand must be allowed to work. In the long run, supply and demand have always governed prices and always will and it is best for the people to have a free and open market for everything. There is only one way for people to learn and that is by experience and many people never learn anything by experience because they simply hope and act on hope or fear. The blame for all the troubles of this country has been placed upon Wall Street and the bankers. The new dealers will never face the facts. They will not answer questions, but the voters should demand of them in the fall of 1940 that they answer for the promises that they made in 1932 and again, in 1936. They should be forced to tell the people why the budget has not been balanced, why they have not fulfilled their promises, why so many people are still unemployed and why the taxes have continued to be increased why the liberties of the people have been taken away and then see what they will promise for 1941 and the troublesome years to come. Of course, they will promise everything, but what will they perform? What we want is not promises but performances, we want acts not words, that is what will save America. Every man before he casts a vote should study the record of the New Deal administration, balance facts against facts and then vote for someone who will, in his belief, give the people a square deal. Europe after the war. When the war ends, which it will one of these days, all Europe will be broke. Destruction has been at the most rapid pace of any time in the history of the world. The expense of this war, not only to Germany but to the Allies, has been the greatest of any time in history. Therefore, when the war is over buying power will be reduced. Our customers in foreign countries will be unable to buy our goods because they will not have the money to buy with. They will have to go back to work and build a torn and wrecked Europe and will have to sell goods for whatever they will bring. Therefore, they will compete with us in all of the other markets. Should Hitler win the war, people will be worked like slaves and goods will be sold at prices that will ruin the markets of the United States, South America and anywhere else, as Dorothy Thompson has so ably put it. These are facts that must be faced. No matter how the war goes, or how the election goes, the United States faces dark days and dark years ahead and the time has come to bid farewell to hope and to face facts and sail the troubled seas with a competent pilot who will guide America safe through these troublesome times. We want no more promises, no more false hopes, no more putting the blame on Wall Street, the bankers and the money changers. We want the New Deal to stand for its mistakes, to admit them and to make way for some able leaders who can pull this country out of the mess. After the war in Europe is over, if we expect to do any business, we will have to produce goods at lower prices. That cannot be done in the United States with union labor demanding more pay and shorter hours. If the New Deal continues in power, 
union labor will get what they want, because of the new deal is elected this fall, union labor will play a prominent part in helping to elect them. Therefore, union labor must be paid off and the country must suffer later for it. Time Cycles and Natural Law I have devoted the best years of my life to a study of natural laws and time factors and have read the Bible many times to find in the pages of this book the wisdom of the ages. I have discovered the time cycles and natural laws laid down in the Bible which, if followed by man, will guide him wisely and enable him to see into the future and to prepare and protect himself and his country in times of greatest danger. History repeats in the lives of men and nations. Wars occur and recur because human nature does not change and because people follow hope and are influenced by fear instead of facts. It is a natural law that action equals reaction in the opposite direction and for every effect there must be an adequate cause. The world, Europe, and the United States included, have planted the seed for a worldwide panic and depression and there is no escaping it. We have sown the seed and we must reap the crop. The Bible tells us plainly that we reap exactly what we sow we must pay the price. Forewarned is forearmed. By studying and knowing something of the future and what is ahead and preparing, we can mitigate the unfavorable conditions which must follow. If a man goes out and gets drunk and spends all the money he has, we know that he is violating the laws of health and that man cannot escape a headache and having spent all his money, he cannot continue as prosperous as the man who saves his money and never gets drunk, thereby protecting his health and making him independent in the future. When will the war end? By the use of these master time cycles, which are based on the law of mathematics and a repetition of time cycles that I have discovered, I can forecast important culminating periods in the history of countries or wars just the same as I forecast important tops and bottoms in the stock market. Using the dates of the beginning of the World War in 1914, and the end of the World War on November 11, 1918, which I predicted by using these cycles, then from the beginning of the present war on September 1, 1939, when Hitler invaded Poland. I get the following important periods on the present war. May 1940, on May 19, in the New York Herald Tribune and the New York Journal American, I advertised that the tide would turn against Germany on May 25 and that they would meet with greater reverses by August 10, 1940. July and August 1940, a very unfavorable cycle runs against Germany from July 10th to August 10th and the war should go against Germany at that time. There is a possibility that peace could come in August, as the time cycle indicates a possibility of the end of the war by September 1st, or after it has run one year. October and November 1940 If the war goes beyond September 1st, Germany will meet severe reverses in October and November. November 1st to 11. 22 years from the end of the World War, is very bad and indicates reverses and resistance for Germany and could be the end of the war. February and March 1941. The next important period is February 8th to 15, and again March 1st to 10, when Germany may meet reverses and the war may come to a sudden end. May, 1941. If the war is still in progress, Germany will meet with great reverses and the war might come to an end one year from May 10, 1940, when Hitler started his drive against Holland, a very important cycle. The period from May 1 to 25, 1941 is one of the worst periods for Germany. The end of the war or peace should come by that time at the latest. The next 10 years for the United States the period from 1940 to 1950 will be one of the most trying periods the United States has ever passed through. Several important major and minor cycles culminate during this time. It repeats a cycle of 100 years back or the period from 1840 to 1850, when we went through a cycle of very low prices for commodities, bank failures, depressions and many troubles. We only came out of that period of depression when gold was discovered in California in 1849. The cycle from 1940 to 1950 is one when the United States is almost sure to be involved in war or revolution. The war cycle for the United States ends in 1944 or 1945. Before we pass out of that cycle, we will face the most serious troubles that this country has ever known. 
we will have to pay the price for the mistakes of the past that the new dealers have invited upon us, either through ignorance or through failure to face facts and tell people the truth. The United States has piled up the most stupendous debt in its history in the shortest period of time. The total debt of the United States government, all states and cities, is somewhere between $160 and $180 billion. Various economists differ on the total debt of the United States, both public and private, but ranges anywhere from $225 to $300 billion. Lambert Schuyler, who wrote Think Fast America, estimates the total as high as $300 billion. But no matter what anyone estimates, the facts are that the debt is the largest ever in history and makes the burden of interest too great for the public or the taxpayer to bear. These debts can never be paid and when billions of dollars are repudiated, they will take away the backbone of the country or the main support, which is the investor's capital. This may bankrupt the insurance companies, savings banks and other banks. If there is a severe decline, the large amount of government bonds held by banks and insurance companies is enough to undermine the surplus of all the banks. It has been figured that a 10% decline in the bonds could wipe out all the surplus of the banks and put them in trouble. Just stop to think what would happen should government bonds decline 50%, or sell at 50 or lower, which they will if this wild wave of spending goes on. I am confident it will never stop if the new dealers remain in power. Then the government will wind up in bankruptcy and our money worth 20c on the dollar or less. The period from 1940 to 1950 is one in which we will have trouble of all kinds, low prices of commodities after the war is over, competition from other countries who can produce goods cheaper than we can, which would cause the loss of our South American trade. 1940, during the fall of 1940 business conditions will get worse. The decline in the stock and bond markets will reduce the income, reduce the purchasing power of investors and farmers, and at the same time taxes will be increased and the burden on the taxpayer will get worse. Government expenses are going to be increased due to preparations for war. And whether the government increases taxes or borrows money and raises the debt, the results in the final analysis will be the same because the burden will fall upon the taxpayer. 1941 the spring and summer occur in a cycle which is usually very unfavorable and causes panics and depressions. Things may get some better in the late summer and fall of this year. 1942, this should be another year for low prices, with business bad. The worst period of the year will be in the late summer and fall. There is danger of war or revolution this year. This period will be 10 years from 1932 when we were at the bottom of a terrible depression. 1943, April to October is probably one of the worst periods which this country has ever passed through. There is grave danger of war or revolution at this time and there may be both. 1944, this is another year when internal troubles threaten and there is danger of war or revolution. It will be a year in which the people will face a lot of hardships and find it hard to make money. There will be unrest and unemployment. 1945, I am happy to write that this year shows a turn for the better, both in business and general conditions. In fact, there may be somewhat of a boom during the latter part of the year. 1946, indicates some better business conditions, although mixed and uncertain at times. 1947, an unfavorable year for general conditions. There is again danger of war or revolution. 1948, a better outlook this year for business. Stocks and commodities should be higher and we may begin to see daylight. 1949, there should be better business brought about by a new discovery or revolutionary invention. This year may bring about the culmination of a minor or major business boom which started in 1947 to 1948. 1950, this year is unfavorable and great changes will take place. However, many changes for the better are indicated during the last half of the year. After 1950, the outlook for the world is better for peace and general prosperity. New Inventions and Discoveries Necessity is the mother of invention. 
men always put forth their greatest efforts when they are forced to through circumstances and when they are in a crisis. War always brings new inventions and new discoveries. People do not put forth their supreme efforts until they have to, to save their lives and liberty. I predict that a new discovery will be made to use sound and create a vibration that will destroy war weapons and overcome the movement of armies and airplanes. The Germans' great weapon has been to create fear, and when this new invention is put into use, by the aid of sound it will paralyze the nerves so that men will be unable to act or fight. Air waves will be circulated in such a way as to control airplanes and increase their flight or prevent them. Inflation or Deflation Every day I receive letters from people asking me when the big wave of inflation will take place. More people have lost fortunes trying to catch the inflation wave than in other ways, because unwise economists have talked inflation all the time and advised people to buy stocks and commodities with the result that the deflation crash came and they have lost their money. Everything that the New Deal has done or is doing is deflationary and not inflationary. All of my calculations and time factors indicate that this war will be of short duration, but the expenses and destruction will be the greatest in history. Therefore, as has always been the case in the past, deflation and lower prices will follow the end of the war. Besides, the new dealers have laid the foundation for deflation and bankruptcy and it will come sooner or later. Should the war continue for a longer period than anticipated, then we may have advances in the cost of living and advances in commodities, but as for any wild boom and advance in stocks due to inflation, I cannot see it and my studies do not indicate it. As far as the stock and commodity markets are concerned, we have to follow them as events develop. My opinion is that raising the price of gold would not bring about another wave of inflation as it did in 1933. It is possible that if the present New Deal government continues, they will make some more foolish moves by expanding credit or starting a boom by using the gold. If this takes place, we might have a mild wave of inflation, which would be followed by a greater decline in deflation later. The thing to do is to face facts and not hope for impossibilities. The acts of the new dealers have been destructive to values and the recent decline in the stock and commodity markets proves that. They have failed to prove that a man can raise himself by pulling on his bootstraps, or that we can spend our way to prosperity by going into debt. There are certain economic laws and natural laws that when violated, bring definite results. The New Dealers have violated all of these laws and the final result will be deflation and bankruptcy, repudiation of debts, public and private, unless businessmen are elected and put in charge of the government, who will administer the government's affairs as a business is run. This is the only salvation for America. The Remedy I have painted a dark picture based on facts that America must face and based on my long years of study of the economic situation, my scientific study of time cycles which is based upon repetition of mathematical laws. Therefore it is but natural for the reader to ask, is there no remedy, is there no hope, and can we in no way avoid some of the dangers and pitfalls that lie ahead? I have written facts as I see them. I have made many mistakes in my life and that is why I can see the mistakes of other people, politicians and leaders. I have learned by making mistakes and know that wisdom and knowledge are the greatest powers in the hands of any man or any nation. There is always a hope and a way to have a bad situation or remedy the matter, if we act in time and act on facts, not on false hopes and promises. Action and not talk will help to carry us over the troubled waters with less damage. For the past seven years people have talked against recklessness of the New Deal, knowing it was wrong, but they have not acted, they have just talked. I have done that myself. Thousands of others have done the same thing. Now the time is past for words, the time for action is here. The taxpayers must organize. If the taxpayers of this country were as well organized as union labor, they could stop the reckless expenditures in 24 hours and could stop the tyrants who rule our government, because the taxpayer is the man who pays the servants of the people, and from the president down they are all the servants of the people. At the present time the servants tell the master what he has to do and tell the taxpayer just what they will take from him. If the taxpayers organize, vote in the right way and stick together, they can refuse to pay these enormous confiscatory taxes. If the taxpayers organize and stick together and make a firm refusal, 
what is government going to do? Are they going to call out the army and shoot down all the taxpayers? No, that will not happen. Not only the taxpayers, but all the people who own any property or have any interest in or want liberty for the future must organize. They must stick together and those who are not with us are against us and must be pointed out and got rid of. We must eliminate the fifth column in this country, no matter whether they be German, Russian or freeborn Americans. If they are not going to support the government of the people, for the people and by the people, then they must be placed as an enemy. We must face hard facts. Government waste must stop. Government expenses must be cut. Money must stop being distributed to people who will not work and who get something for nothing just because they will note to keep dictators in power. We must get rid of union labor dictators who tell the government and the people what to do. The government must be run on a business basis just like any other business. The budget must be balanced. The government must be run by businessmen. If the New Deal wins in November 1940, the last hope for America is gone. There is only one thing to save this country and that is a businessman at the head of the government, supported by a business administration and businessmen elected to Congress and the Senate. We have plenty of businessmen in this country with ability and brains to manage a business and make a success and we can get businessmen to run the government and make it a success. Where would we be today if Henry Ford was running the United States government? We would be out of debt and have money in the bank. If this government was managed as the United States Steel Corporation is managed or as General Motors is managed, where would we be today? We would be paying dividends and not seeking more assessments, increasing taxes and putting the government further into debt. In my humble opinion, Wendell L. Wilkie is one of the ablest businessmen in this country and if he is elected president, we will see a revolution in government management. He would do all in his power to pull us out of the mess. General Hugh Johnson writes that it is time for the people to take action and says, We have a chance to protect ourselves only once in four years and this is the time. Page Wendell Wilkie He is the only hope on the horizon who is fitted by temperament and training for this particular work. Thomas E. Dewey might make a good president or vice president. He is an able man and my opinion is that he would be a wonderful attorney general, as he would help to drive the fifth column out of the United States and clean up the enemies in our midst. But no one man can perform miracles. No one man can undo all the damage that the New Deal has done. We must pay for that debauch, but we can stop a future debauch and sober up and pay off the past debts. The people do not know what they want or need because they have listened to promises and hope so long. They need a man who will tell them the truth and make them realize that this government must go on a cash basis and not spend more than the income. Who should vote? The people on relief, many of whom will not take a job when they can get it, are a burden on the taxpayer and are working in opposition to the taxpayer and the businessmen's interests. Why should these people be allowed to vote? It is a foregone conclusion that they will vote to keep the new dealers in power, because they expect to get something for nothing. The man who pays one million dollars per year in taxes to support this government is allowed one vote, and the man who is living off the government, not willing to work, can offset the vote of the man who pays one million dollars per year in taxes. Is this fairness? Is this justice or liberty? There are thousands of people on the government payroll who should not be there, filling offices created for no other purpose than to repay an election promise for support. The man who is holding a government job is going to vote against the taxpayer because he is voting for a selfish motive. To keep in power the new dealer who in turn will keep him in his job. His vote should be limited or restricted. The whole system and setup is wrong. The people who work, run businesses and support the government by paying taxes have less rights than those who do not work and receive something for nothing, but as I wrote before, the servants of the people are telling the people who pay them what they have to do. This must and will be changed sooner or later. Under the New Deal people who own no property and do nothing to support the government are in the majority, yet they can cast votes to take all of the property and money from those who have it and give it to the New Dealers to squander. This is not the basis of free government. It is not what our forefathers fought for, to make this a land of freedom and liberty. National Lottery 
our government has gambled foolishly with the taxpayers' money and lost it. The progressive people, sports or gamblers, if you want to call them that, are sending out of the United States each year more than five billions of dollars to sweepstakes and foreign lotteries. If a law should be passed establishing a national lottery and state lottery, then all this money that goes to the foreign countries would go to the states and federal government and in 20 years or less time, by taking 20 or 30 percent out of each dollar spent for lottery tickets, the national debt could be paid off and the people would be happy and well satisfied. The gambling instinct, the urge to take a chance is what made this country. This country was made by people who were progressive, who were willing to leave the old world and come here and take a chance in the new world. They risked their lives, their fortunes and everything else. Men and women will always continue to risk money for profits and those with a purely gambling instinct will risk money unwisely, as there is no moral law or man-made law that will ever stop them from taking a chance. You cannot change human nature. Therefore, why not let them take a chance where they will get a square deal and if they win the money in a lottery, they will be paid off by the government? The government can take a liberal share. This is a fair way of raising revenue and will pay off the debts and get the government in shape. Proof of this is the amount of money that is made through percentage taken at the race tracks through mutual machines. Sales Tax Every man, woman and child who enjoys the benefits of liberty and freedom in the United States should help to support the government. The rich should not be forced to pay all of the taxes. Everyone should pay according to his means and according to what he can afford. If we had a sales tax in this country that covered everything, except food, then everyone would help to pay the cost of the government. This would go a long way towards reducing other taxes and the sales tax would be paid each day every time a purchase is made and would be so small that no one would feel it or complain about it. Many ways can be found to raise revenue without increasing the burden of taxation. Taxes, as they are today, on real estate and on business, must be reduced or business cannot survive, neither can people continue to own real estate or own their homes. Reduce taxes and a balanced budget. Those who save must be permitted a reasonable return on their money in the way of interest rates. If the government keeps on cutting down interest rates to get control of the banks and all the money in the country, this will make conditions worse. If the government continues to take more and more in taxes, finally when there is no more to take, where are we going to get the money to continue to pay the extravagant expenses of running the government? If the people of the United States do not face the facts at the polls in November 1940, it will be too late to face them at a later date. Once the New Deal is in again, facing facts then will not help us and a revolution is sure to follow later. The United States needs a business administration now more than ever before. We need a man with brains and experience, a man with knowledge who believes in a balanced budget, a man who will tell the people all the truth and ask them to face facts before we are in war or before we have a dictatorship and bankruptcy. Venezuela, the land of hope and promise. After telling my readers the dark side of the conditions in this country many of them will want to know what to do with their money and where they can invest it safely. I have recently made a survey of Venezuela. This is the only country in the world today, as far as I know that is absolutely free of debt. The government owes no debt, has no outstanding bonds, either external or internal. The government has a surplus of over $100 million, is paying cash for everything it buys and the people are not being taxed. They have a democratic form of government. The banks are sound and money can be deposited and withdrawn freely as there are no restrictions of any kind on deposits. The government receives enough revenue from the oil companies to more than pay the running expenses. This is why there are no taxes. The country is rich in mineral resources and is the greatest oil producing country in the world. It has virgin forests and thousands of acres of rich soil. People from the United States are welcome. The government will give land to people who want to farm and loan money to buy farm implements. There are many opportunities for making money in Venezuela. The climate is about the same as Miami, Florida. With mountains on each side of the country, the climate is delightful most of the year. 
Maraca Iba is only 9 hours flying time by the Pan American Airway from Miami, Florida. People looking for virgin soil or new business opportunities for the future will do well to visit and investigate Venezuela. For further information in regard to Venezuela may be obtained by writing to the Venezuelan Consul in New York or Miami, Florida, and by writing to the American Ambassador at Caracas, Venezuela. Back to God We need and must have a spiritual revival. People have gotten too far away from God. Selfishness and greed for power and possessions has increased and we must return to reason soundness, justice and brotherly love. If reform is necessary and needed, it should be done through the churches, and the morals of the people appeal to rather than passing laws to try to force them to reform. The new dealers have passed so many unjust laws that people have grown to disrespect these laws and refuse to obey them, but once they understand God's laws and God's ways, they will obey them because they know they are for their own good. Wake up America America must wake up. The women of the country must wake up and do some thinking and acting. If they don't, their investments will be swept away. All of the money for their protection in the hands of the life insurance companies will be lost. Their future will be indeed dismal. The truth has been concealed and kept from the people. The truth must be told and they must face facts before it is too late and do something about it. We have a great country and with an honest administration in Washington, we can overcome a lot of our troubles, but without a change of policy and administration the worst canon will happen. W. D. Gan. Miami, Florida. May 24, 1940.